Here are the nine things you must do when visiting Melbourne, Australia. And we're going to start off with something that's free. We can't believe how easy it is to get around a big city. Uh, the trams are free. Just to clarify, Melbourne has a free tram zone which covers the central business district and selected inner city areas. This means that you can travel on any tram within this zone without needing to pay. The free tram zone covers the area from Queen Victoria Market across to Victoria Harbour in the Docklands up to Spring Street and over to Flinders Street Station and Federation Square. Trams outside of this zone, such as those going to St Kilda, required a valid Mickey card or paper ticket. The free tram zone operates 24 hours a day, 7 days a week and includes the City Circle Tram, which is a popular tourist attraction. Please note the free tram zone only applies to trams and not to trains or buses. If you are travelling outside of the free tram zone, you will need to purchase a Mickey card or paper ticket. Um, we get ours, we're in the Crown <clears throat> Plaza and we've got Batman Park just opposite and it's just there isn't it? Yeah. So it was so so easy. So we ended up going up to, we thought oh we're so hungry and we spoke to the concierge who gave us a map who was very very helpful and we said we fancy some Chinese food. And he said to us well maybe you should go to Chinatown. Chinatown. We thought oh that's a good plan. Melbourne's Chinatown is a vibrant cultural enclave located in the heart of Melbourne's central business district. It is one of the oldest and largest Chinatowns in the world, with history dating back to the Gold Rush era of the 1850s. Um, and we found it very easily, didn't we? We found it really easily, and he gave us a recommendation, yeah. which we sort of stumbled upon by chance, really, because we sort of thought, well, we've got to give it a It was called a... Juicy Boa. Yeah. Or Juicy Bow. We went to Juicy Bow. We wasn't sure. We thought, well, we'll just have a sort of a snack letty thing. And we ended up having beef in black bean sauce on a sizzling dish. With two little bowls of rice. Bowls and of rice. it was delicious. Oh, it, it was... It um, was superb. It was 38 dollars yeah. which is about 20 pound which does sound like enough money but when they bought the portion huge out, portion it was like a double portion it was double the size of what you would get at home so um beef was just lovely and it tender. Was, it was, the sauce it, was lovely yeah. the and just some uh, bottle of tap water which was free yeah so um so that was good yeah so Flinders Street Station is one of Melbourne's most iconic landmarks and the busiest train station in Australia its clock faces at the Flinders and Swanson corner is often used as a meeting point for locals and tourists alike. Flinders Street Station is not only a functional transportation hub but also an iconic architectural gem. If you cross the river from Flinders Station and head down the south bank you'll come to the Crown. In there is um, upmarket restaurants like Nobu, there's like a, a food court, there's shops and there's this casino that we've never seen such a big casino, have we? I thought it was going to go on forever. So we thought, let's go in and just have a little bit of a flutter. And because we're businessmen, and because, businessmen. because we're business people <laughs> and we're very clever with money, we went in there and we turned 50 Australian dollars into yes drum roll zero dollars <laughs> yeah. but it took us a while to get yeah, rid of it didn't it, it did, yeah we tried our best but yes uh, so we're probably there for about an hour and a half weren't yeah. we doing different pokies um, they had live music in there yeah they, they had, had a duo in there I can't show fun. you any photos because you're not no. allowed to take um, photos or film in a casino it was massive yeah. lots of different bars live music so it's a whole entertainment complex in itself isn't yeah, it yes so you could go in there and it's not compulsory that you have to play on the fruit machine pokies yeah. tables whatever and they had bars like there was a duo all in there they were fantastic weren't they, they were were really good so i mean um we did have I haven't said that. I had a bottle of Peroni, which cost about $12, which I thought was enough money. No, I had a bottle of water. You had a bottle of Peroni, and it was $12 together. Oh, $12 together. And my bottle oh. of water was $2.50, which was the same that it was in 7-Eleven. Yeah, so, um, so not offensive prices yeah. but yeah it was and it's just like you just walk around there with your mouth open it's, it's yeah, just it's mad. fascinating yeah. yeah really enjoyed that we thought oh we'll go outside ready for the fire show so we thought for the fire show this time we'll stand on the bridge so we'll have a good 
uh, view of the pillars and we'll have the three there that have been really close to us yeah. um, and um, this is what happened And as you can see, two of the pillars weren't working. <laughs> so, so. But fair play, the oh. the power of that flame yeah. and the heat coming off was. Um, it was funny seeing all the rowers below, wasn't it? All yeah, there stopped. Was, yeah, there was probably people. about 20, 25 <laughs> people in canoes, all, yeah. in, all in the river watching the watching the fire. So that stuff. happens at every hour, but it starts at different times during the year. So just um, check that out. But it was from, in the summer, high like summer where we are now. It starts at nine o'clock. Yeah. But obviously earlier in the, um, in the winter. winter, it starts yeah. earlier. So, But it's a fantastic complex. And getting over the river is really easy. It's not a big river. Because when I looked at the map initially before we came to Melbourne, I thought, oh, how far is that going to be? Is that going to be a huge walk over, like, the Seven Bridge? <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Is it going to be a really long uh, 14 walk? 14 miles. It took us three hours, didn't it? No, it didn't. It takes you a bit. Five minutes. Yeah. So um, everything's very easy, accessible in Melbourne, it's isn't it? Very, very accessible. Yeah, very, very good. Right then. Right so we start our first day in Melbourne by sussing out where cargo was because we'd arranged to meet a few of our followers there and we wanted to, wanted to make sure we knew where it was. Well, we walked down the river, which was beautiful, wasn't it, Paulie? The sun was shining and it was really good. So here's a few of our views that we've seen on our walk down to find cargo. about it because we've been meeting individuals which have worked really well we thought yeah. how would a group work uh how would the dynamics work would it work and oh my god it was brilliant wasn't it yes it was um we thought you know a couple of hours it'll all be done wasn't it really <laughs> six and a half hours later no. we're still there chatting away thinking oh, we must go um i want to just say thank you so much um to paul to andrew and Rhonda, to tony and to marianne and brad and michelle sandra and sandra who was actually the one who um said to us you must why don't you do a meetup um, and everyone just got on really well and it was lovely yeah, it was we were just talking about all sorts so thank you all guys for coming along it was a really special day for us wasn't it because strangely not only didn't we know anybody but neither did they individually know anybody so no it, never but it was good either, so, it was uh, really really good yeah. so thank you again guys that was absolutely um, well a highlight of our trip to Melbourne well, definitely well when we consider we got there at f just before four o'clock and we only left because the place closed. Well, it was closed <laughs> down, I know. Great spot there, Cargo. It's not cheap, yeah. um, but it was a great area when the sun went down, the heat has come on, and you can see the sunset, mm. um, as you can see from here, which was was pretty special, wasn't it? If you're planning to meet friends, yeah. actually, it worked really, really well. And the Dockland, Docklands was a lovely area to walk around, really wasn't nice. it? Apart from... And we met Sandra's daughter too yes. when she picked Sandra up, so that was great too. Well, I did have a bit of a scary incident because I was chatting away to somebody who was across the table from me, so I'm sort of looking diagonally. Oh, yeah. And then my gaze was taken 
But I thought, what's that up there? And there was some some apartments opposite, and there was a man out on the balcony, and he must have been like about twenty five stone, and he was as naked as a jaybird. <laughs> <laughs> I missed it. Oh uh, well, uh, well, I'm glad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So we want to say, say a special thanks to um, all you guys. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Andrew and Rhonda coming along. Thank you, Mary Ann. Thank you, Tony. Uh, thank you, Brad and Michelle. And thank you, Sandra, for having the idea initially, wasn't it, to do a meetup yeah. in Melbourne. Uh, it was just, just brilliant fun. Now, our first stop today, we headed straight for the Queen Victoria Market. <laughs> I laugh. Because uh, I thought she was going to get it wrong again. When we tried finding the Queen Victoria Market the first day we were here, and by the time we found it, uh, it closed. Carol got saying, we're going to the Victorian Market. I said, I'm sure it's called the Queen Victoria Market. She said, no, 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 it's the Victoria Market. Well, when we got right. there, Annie, what was it called? Queen Victoria Market. <laughs> yes, Paulie Morgan was right. Um, but when we found the front end, as you'll see here, like the really old facade... Do you call it the facade? The front. F facade. That's it. Uh, we thought, oh, that doesn't look very big. And then I said to him, I'm really disappointed about going. And I started reading more about it. It's only seven hectares. Yeah. And a hectare's a big thing, isn't it? Well, a hectare was a dog in a cartoon when I was growing up. And he had a house. Oh, yeah. He, what was he, that called? And he was a silly old Hector. <laughs> yeah. Hector's house. Oh, yes. <laughs> But anyway, we found it today, and oh my god, it was amazing, wasn't it? Was, it? It, was it was just a uh, well. Here you are. We'll show you a few things that. Uh, um, well, we'll show you around, and we did find a kangaroo, but it wasn't one we wanted to see. Yeah, unfortunately, it was in a butcher shop window. Yeah, but here's what: um, if you're planning on coming to Melbourne, this is a must see. Yes. We bought the donuts. Right. We were told to go and get a hot donut. Yeah. From Victoria. Queen Victoria Mark. Yeah. Is it really red hot? Oh. I didn't even get any jam. You didn't even get any jam? Is oh. jam gonna burn oh. your mouth? No, oh. oh. no. Is it as good as they say? You won't like it. <laughs> ah, is that the best donut you've ever had? That sounds the best I ever had, but it's good. <laughs> anyway, too much talking. I'm going in. Sorry, I'm talking with my mouth full, but it's donut time. Fresh hot jam donuts. Well, from it's so it. crispy on the outside, and then the ooze of the jam. Look at that. And the doughy and the dough. loveliness. Mm. Delicious. Next up is the Old Melbourne Jail. Spelt G A O L, which really yeah, confused is, me. There is I keep Carol's calling it Goal. She says, "I want to go to Melbourne Goal Jail." And I said, why do you keep calling it Goal Jail? Well, that's what it says in the front of it. It said Goal at the front of it. I said, no, mate. That's the old English spelling. I think it is of the, It's the old English spelling. Don't make me Google it. <laughs> it's the G-A-O-L is the old English spelling of the word jail. If Can you not remember when we went to the quiz uh, at uh, Steve's Bar in Thailand and he read out the question, who wrote Reading Goal? And everybody fell about laughing because the question should have been, who wrote Reading Jail? Ah, oh, if you're watching, Steve, aye, yeah. because there were such fabulous memories That's... of Kosamui in the office. I do remember that, actually, because Steve's pronunciation of words was brilliant. A bit like yours. 
<laughs> We've got so much in common. Yeah, the card. But oh. anyway, if you know the original origin of that word, then let us know in the comments yeah. below. This jail was home to a famous in inmate called Ned Kelly, wasn't it? Yes, it was. So Paul's going to now tell you all about Ned Kelly. He was um, a famous outlaw. <laughs> um, he was he was famous for, and it's the it's the weird things that it stirs up in your brain. Um, he was famous because he was an outlaw, and he made his own suit of armor. So when he ever like robbed anywhere, or the you know the law tried bringing him down, he had this suit of armor, including this like. Um, quite sort of rudimental helmet made out of metal. Mm. And when I said to Carol today, and she looked at me like I was a loony, back in the day, there was a Weetabix advert featuring not the real Ned Kelly, obviously. And of course, if you had three Weetabix, nobody could take you yeah. down. And he went to eat his third Weetabix, but he'd put his helmet on by that point and he couldn't get it through the hole in his helmet. Yeah. <laughs> So and they that's, caught and him. That's how he got caught. Yeah. So there's a bit of um, fiction mixed with fact there, but ah. he, yes, he ended up in Melbourne Gold Jail. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, here's some more facts and figures yes. about this amazing place. If you get, if you've got a fascination with history and crime, it's a it's a must see. We thoroughly enjoyed our yeah, time in there, didn't we? Really good. Yeah. So here's some more facts and figures and interesting and things about um, this place. About the Gold Jail. <laughs> Melbourne Jail was operational from 1845 until 1929 and as you can see is now a museum and tourist attraction. The jail is known for its history of imprisonment and execution of some of Australia's most notorious criminals, including the aforementioned Ned Kelly, who strangely when he was hanged in 1880 his own mother was working in the prison laundry. Other well-known prisoners include Elizabeth Scott, the only woman executed at the jail, and Frederick Bailey Deeming, who some believed was Jack the Ripper. The jail consists of a number of different buildings and yards, including the original cell blocks, the exercise yard and the chapel. Visitors to the museum can take a guided tour and learn all about the jail's history, including the conditions in which the prisoners were kept, and the methods of execution that were used. Today, Melbourne Jail is a popular tourist attraction and is visited by thousands of people each year. It's open to the public daily and offers a unique glimpse into the darker side of Melbourne's history. Was we went to the library. Oh yes. You forgot about that, didn't you? Tony, one of our patrons who we met at the meet, gave us a great tip about going to the library. He said, just walk in there. He said, I know it sounds a bit of a strange thing, but go through into the, the dome. So we thought, oh, okay, let's, let's do it. And oh my God, it was it's spectacular. A wonderful place where you're seeing people just being educated, um, just sat there studying, just so peaceful. And when you walk in, you see this. Wasn't it? it was amazing i have to say yeah. it's always going to be a library how, you know how good can it be yeah it was it was fantastic so thank you tony yeah. for that tip that was uh that was amazing right then right then so what a a day we've had a day that's fitting to end such a special holiday yeah it's been absolutely phenomenal be do, 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 do. <laughs> We're a bit delirious, I think, because it's half past one in the morning. We've just got in. Um, well, let's start off with the how the day began. With um, We were contacted by a lovely lady called Eunice, who follows our YouTube channel, and I asked if she could meet us while we were in uh, Melbourne. She couldn't make our meet-up, as you've seen previously on Thursday, so we arranged to have just coffee with her before we went on another adventure. So thank you, Eunice, for coming and meeting us at yes. the Crone Plaza. It was a joy to meet you. It was, it was an absolute um, pleasure. Yeah, lovely lady, and we had sat there for a couple of hours, wasn't it, yeah. just chatting away. Um, really enjoyed that. 
So after we'd had our lovely uh, coffee with uh, Eunice, we uh, arranged to meet with Brad and Michelle, a lovely couple that had been to, uh, to our meetup previously. And, um, well, where do we start? Let's just show you what a fantastic day we had. They come and picked us up. And this is what we did. Yeah. Phillip Island is approximately 88 miles or 142 kilometres from the centre of Melbourne and takes about two hours to drive there. Our first stop was the Wildlife Park. After cruising around Australia for the last 24 days, we still hadn't seen a koala or a kangaroo. But thanks to Brad and Michelle, this happened and more, as you can see here. Here we go. Is this going to be where we're going to see our first koala? Where? Where is it? Where? It's too hot. Ah! Where? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Turn around! <laughs> Smile! <laughs> oh my god, look at this one, he's just um, <laughs> Sparko! He's sleeping. Ah! Oh, that's too cute. To say we were excited to see our first kangaroo would be a massive understatement. And when we got to feed a mummy kangaroo with her little joey in her pouch, I thought Carol was going to explode. As well as kangaroos and koalas, we saw some animals for the first time in our lives, and some were much better looking than others. If you're ever in this area, a trip to this wildlife park is an absolute must. But if you're going to feed the emus, be very careful. <laughs> ah! <I am. laughs> well, they're quite accurate, I think, and they, uh... oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Two more, two more, one more. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah, they are accurate. accurate. Yeah. Last go. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Careful they don't pinch your phone. <laughs> Hello? No, oh, Polly's not your... <laughs> It was then time for the penguin parade. 
Phillip Island is the home to Australia's largest colony of little penguins, with over 40,000 breeding penguins found on the Summerland Peninsula. The little penguin is not only the smallest of all penguins, weighing around 1 kilo or 2.2 pounds, but is also the only penguin with blue and white feathers. You can experience the magic of watching these amazing seabirds waddle home from the ocean to their burrows any night of the year from the viewing platforms and boardwalks at the nature park. As soon as dusk arrives, the penguins start their walk from the ocean back to the burrows to feed their young. No photography of any type is allowed, as this could confuse the penguins and stop them from coming ashore. However, Phillip Island Nature Park encourage you to use any stock footage they have on their website. So we just want to say thank you so much, uh, Brad and Michelle. It was an absolute pleasure. Oh, fantastic. Um, fantastic company. And you finished our holiday off in style, wouldn't it? Uh, they they dispelled some myths because we thought the, they were a mythical creature like unicorns. Who? Kangaroos. Kangaroos. <laughs> Ah, uh, you no, know, it was, it, was just, it was a very, very special day where we ticked off all those boxes of kangaroos, um, koalas, and who'd have thought penguins? We never thought penguins when no. we thought when we came to Australia, did we? Or emus. Or emus. Because anybody who's British, you don't want to mess with or emus. Or Tasmanian devil. Oh, no. Or a dingo. No, we did. But I didn't even think of a dingo, did you? No. He was hiding there, wasn't he? He was like that. Anyway, scary, we haven't been drinking. No, we haven't. haven't. We're just high on fern. We are. Yeah. So thank you so much, uh, Brad and Michelle. That was absolutely um, an epic end to our trip in Australia. Yes, it was. We stayed at the Crown Plaza Hotel in Melbourne and also cruised around Australia with Azamara Cruises. So why not watch those videos next? We would also like to thank everybody who made our trip to Australia so special. <laughs>